Today's gospel reading comes out of the 20th chapter of Matthew, verses 1 to 16. And today's gospel reading is going to teach us all the one item that keeps many people from enjoying their blessing, realizing their blessings, appreciating their blessings. But before we discover what that one item is, we have to put today's gospel reading in context. Now, the gospel parable itself occurs in Palestine. And the main crop in Palestine was grapes. Grapes matured in mid-September, and the rainy season started in late September. So the owner of these grape vineyards, they only had a small window of opportunity to get those grapes picked before they would rot on the vine when the monsoon started. So they had this tradition, they would hire anyone they ran across, morning, afternoon, evening, just get out there and pick those grapes. And usually what would happen is, on the very last day when finally all the grapes were picked and they are all in the storage bins, they were so jubilant, they would pay everyone the same amount of money. This went on year after year after year. And that's where the retribution comes in today's gospel reading, because by the time we get to verse 14 in this story, everyone's been paid. Now the group who worked the longest, those who worked in the, starting in the morning, they are very upset that they got the same amount of pay is those who worked only one hour. Let's see what happens. Verse 14, 20th chapter of Matthew. So when the first came, that's a reference to those who worked from the early morning. They thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowners, saying, These last ones worked only one hour. You made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. Uh, now, naturally, maybe they have a grievance because they worked all day long and they got the same amount of pay as those who only worked an hour. But if they were thinking clearly, they would have said to themselves, at least we had a job. We agreed to the usual daily wage and the man did not cheat us because he paid us what we agreed to before we started to work. But what happened to that first group of workers? What became the thing that ignited them inside of their heart? We're going to discover that in verse 15 and 16, 20th chapter of Matthew. Now, the vineyard owner said, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give to the last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you in this because I am generous? Now, he leaves with that very powerful question, are you in this because I am generous? And there's only two answers that you could use for that, yes or no. So I ask all of you this morning, that first group of workers, they are really upset that they got the same amount of money as those who worked only one hour. And they ask them that powerful question, I want you to give me the answer. Are you envious because I am generous? And the answer to that question is what? Yes. I sure am envious because you are generous. I would have wished you paid them less, or I wish you would have paid me more. Then I would have been happy. But I am envious because you are generous. Envy, that's the thing that keeps us from appreciating what God has given to us. You know, envious comes from the French word envy. It's a very interesting word. All I'll do is just a little word. It translated from the original French, it means an incredible amount. Envy means this. Envy is the ability to see far, but not to see close. So when you're stricken with envy, you can see what your neighbor has, but you can't see what you have. You can see that what that guy has, but you can't see what you have. So you look around your neighborhood, and you look around at work, and you say to yourself, he's got the bigger house, the bigger car, the nicer wife, the big, nicer kids. He's got it all, but I don't have any of that. Because it allows you to see far, but not near. Have you ever been stricken with envy? Well, there's a good chance the answer to that question is repeated, yes. Whatever you're having in life, sometimes we like to have a pity party for ourselves. Where you think the whole world's against you. Everyone else has everything that could possibly want. God has given me nothing. I'm upset. I don't know why God hasn't blessed me when in fact he has. Because you're struggling with envy. I remember many years ago when I was just a little fella, 12, 13, 14 years old. 
I had a really fun after school job and a job that I would do in the summertime as well. There is a farmer down in Murraysville. He had a chicken farm, 3,000 chickens. He raised the chickens in order to produce the eggs, obviously, to support his family. I picked up this nice little job after school. I get my little pedal bike and pedal to his farm. And all I had to do, he had these chickens broken down into 15 different rooms inside of his massive barn, 200 chickens in each room. And I would get there and I would enter the barn all on my own and I would get the big bucket of feed and all I had to do is go to each room and I would enter a room with the chickens and I would pour the feed into the trough. And as I was pouring the feed into the trough, all the chickens would jump out of their little coops and they would run down and begin to eat. They'd just line up the trough. You'd have all these chickens on this side of the trough and that side of the trough eating their supper. Not fighting, not making a noise, just eating. Now, while they were eating, then I'd get another container, I'd go and pick up the eggs. This one particular day, I saw something that I hadn't seen up to that point. I enter this one room with 200 chickens, and I get the big bucket of feed, and I pour the feed into the trough, and all the little chickens run over, and both sides of the trough are eating. And I noticed over in the corner was a little chicken. He didn't come over to eat that day. Why not? So I went over to see this little chicken. He was alive. He was healthy. He looked good. I lifted the little chicken up, and, and I put him back down, and he fell to the ground right there on the straw. Huh. So I lift him up a little higher, and I looked, and I could tell one of his little legs was broke. So he, he couldn't walk. So I put him back in the straw, and I said to the chicken, you stay right here, little chicken. Of course, he wasn't able to go anywhere. I said, you stay right here. I'm going to bring you some food over. So I went over the trough and I reached in and I got a little handful of food and I walked it over the chicken. I put it right in front of his face. All he had to do was eat right there. So I figured later on, I'll tell the owner of the, this farm what's going on with that little chicken. But for right now, he's going to have himself some supper. The most interesting thing happened when I got the feed and I put it in front of this little chicken, just a handful, put it right in front of his face so he can eat. All of a sudden, all those chickens comfortably eating at the trough, they all ran over. They all ran over. Now they're picking each other, fighting each other. Feathers are flying everywhere. They're trying to get his food. And I thought to myself, why? Look, he only knows a handful of food. You guys are eating all that food out of the trough. Why would you run over to get his food? Because those chickens suffer from what? Envy. They belong to the animal kingdom. So do we. I was surprised that chickens and all other animals, they all suffer from the same things we do. Those imperfections of greed and envy. Because they were ran over to get his food. They were envious. I didn't understand that for many years of my life and eventually figured it out later. That's why they ran over. You see, they had all the food they wanted, comfortably eating side by side along this long, long trough of food. But they decided to go over and fight to get his feed and injure each other in the process. Because they failed to see what was right in front of them. There's my food more than I could want. But I'm going to go get his. That's envy. How often in life we suffer from envy. You'll see what someone else has and you immediately say, I want that. I want his car. I'd rather have his house. Instead of just looking at what you have and say, I love what I have. It's perfect for me. It might not be the biggest, it might not be the best, but in terms of the material acquisition, I've been so blessed. I thought I would never have these items at all in my life. Why do I go out and fight to try to take his and steal his or fight for his when I should just be satisfied with what I have? And those personal belongings. I've had parents tell me this. I've had parents over all these years brag more about the neighbor's kids than they do about their own. And I always think that's sad. Because just look at what you have. They're yours. 
Why not be happy and satisfied with them? Because when you are stricken with envy, you can't see what you have. You can see far, but not near. The Santa loner asked the group who worked all day long, and they should have just been said, hey, look, we have a job. He paid us with what we told him we wanted. That's good enough, instead of being envious. But he asked them the question, are you envious because I am generous? I think the challenge for all of us today, and everyone's coming from a different position this morning, and maybe this week you were plagued a little bit with envy. Maybe you entered this church this morning a little upset that you don't have what you want to have and someone else has more than you think they deserve and what they have is what you should have. But I think in many ways, Jesus this morning asked us all a very powerful question. And we'll take that question that the landowner asked the first group of workers and we'll just ask that question by the first half of the sentence. I think Jesus asked all of us this morning, simple little question. Are you envious? Are you satisfied and happy with what you have? Once you're satisfied with your blessings and you realize your blessings, guess what's right around the corner? Happiness. But if you cannot see your blessings and you don't appreciate what you have, happiness is elusive. It'll never be yours. So the question Jesus asked, and we have to answer it on our own, each one here individually. He asked the question, are you envious? 